Hello everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Um, today our goal is to find an expression for this. Um, like an infinite sum expression. Something other than an integral. Alright, so my first thought when doing this was to see if I could uh, find like a Taylor series expansion for 1 over 1 plus e to the x. And um, that does have a Taylor series expansion, uh, but it's only good from negative infinity to zero. So that's not what we want. So that's not gonna help us. So this is what I came up with, and it's kind of a roundabout way, but what we're gonna do is we're going to start with a function of t equal to the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative tx over 1 plus e to the x dx. All right. And then we will bring x to negative x. So this will be equal to the integral from, well, let's see, we're going to get uh, um, negative, so that's going to be 0 to negative infinity of e to the tx over 1 plus e to the negative x times negative dx, and we'll use that negative sign to switch our bounds. And then what we'll do is we'll multiply the top and the bottom of this expression by e to the x. So that will have the effect of adding an x to the exponent right there, and this will just switch back to an e to the x. Or actually, this will become an e to the x, and that will become a 1, but we'll just switch them around. All right, then we'll factor out the x to give us x times t plus 1. All right, so let's see. Now what? Well, um, let's recognize that the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of one over one plus e to the x that's going to be equal to, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That one over one plus e to the x is equal to the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of negative one to the n times e to the n x. All right, and we'll use, oh, and that, by the way, that's good from uh, negative infinity to zero. All right, so this is going to be equal to, well, let's see. We're going to have the integral from negative infinity to zero, and then we'll still have this e to the x times t plus 1. Uh, then we'll have a sum going from zero to infinity of negative 1 to the n times e to the n x, and then all of that is integrated with respect to x. I hope you can see that. All right, so now what do we do? Um, let's bring this e to the x times t plus 1 inside our integral. So this is going to give us f of t equals the integral from negative infinity to 0. Uh, and then let's see. We're going to get uh, the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity. We'll still have negative 1 to the n, and then e to the nx plus tx plus x. e to the nx plus tx plus x. That should be it, right? We have tx, tx, we have x, x, and we have nx, nx. All right. And then this is dx. All right. Well, let's let's rewrite it again. Uh, that's going to be the sum going from zero to infinity. And by the way, we're going to use Fubini's theorem on this since there won't be any problems with convergence when we do that. All right. What's going to be on the outside? We're going to have this negative one to the n, and then we'll have the integral from negative infinity to zero of e 
to the x times n plus t plus 1. All right. And this is dx. And uh, this integral right here, I won't go over the steps, but that's going to evaluate to 1 over n plus t plus 1. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and put that right there. This is going to be over n plus t plus 1. All right, because the derivative or the, in, the indefinite integral of e to the x times n plus t plus 1 with respect to x is the same thing, but then we get over this part right here. And then we evaluate it from negative infinity. Um, if we evaluated it at negative infinity, um, anyway, that's, that's what it is. You know, I'm stumbling over my words, so I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that that's exactly what it is. f of t is equal to this. So after all that work, we're just going to write this up here. This is the same as that. So this is the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over n plus t plus 1. All right. Well, how does that help us with this? It doesn't really yet, uh, but watch this. Watch this. Let's start taking derivatives of both these things. We'll take two or three or four, maybe, until a pattern emerges. And then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll generate, or we'll, we'll solve the kth derivative once we find the pattern. So f prime of t, let's see, we're always going to still have the integral from 0 to infinity. Um, when we use the Leibniz rule on this, we will recover a negative sign. We will recover an x, and then the rest will be the same. e to the negative tx over 1 plus e to the x dx. And this is just the antiderivative with respect to t of this thing, and that should be pretty simple. We'll still have the negative 1 to the n. Uh, this will be an n plus t plus 1 all squared and we'll recover a negative sign. All right, so there's our first derivative. Let's take another one. Let's take another derivative. So we'll have f double prime of t. Let's see, we're gonna get another negative sign, which will cancel that one. Zero to infinity, we'll have an x squared now, times e to the negative tx over one plus e to the x dx. And this is gonna be equal to two because we'll recover a 2 from this when we take the derivative with respect to t, and the negative sign will cancel that negative sign. So we'll have 2 times the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of negative, negative 1 to the n over n plus t plus 1 all cubed. One more time. f triple prime of t. Most of you already probably see the pattern. We're going to really hammer it home here. It's going to be negative x cubed e to the negative tx over 1 plus e to the x dx. And this will be negative 6 times the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over n plus t plus 1 all to the fourth power. Okay, that's good enough for the pattern. So let's find out what our kth derivative would be. If we take k derivatives of this thing, what are we going to get? Well, here we'd have f to the, the kth derivative like this. We'll express it like this. f with a little k above it. That's not f raised to the k power. That's the kth derivative of f. That's going to be equal to, let's see. This part, it goes, let's see. At derivative 0, it starts with a positive. So we're going to have negative 1 to the k, right? Because the first one is positive, the second one is negative, the third one is positive, the fourth one is negative, and so on and so on. I'm sorry, I, me I messed that up, but you get the point. Um, all right. So, yeah, that's negative 1 to the k times the integral from 0 to infinity 
of x to the, well, whatever derivative we're on, this power is equal to that. So we're on the third derivative, that's the third power of x. We're on the kth derivative, it's going to be the kth power of x. And then we'll still have the e to the negative tx over 1 plus e to the x dx. All right. Well, that's our kth derivative expressed as an integral, but what is our kth derivative expressed as a sum? And I'll denote that the kth derivative of our function of t expressed as a sum. That's what that little s down there means. You know, we don't really need it because they're, they're equivalent. They're the same thing. All right. Again, we're going to alternate positive negative. And then it looks like this term is going to be k factorial, because this is 6, and we're on derivative, or we're on, yeah, derivative 3, and 3 factorial is 6. So we just write that k factorial. Um, and then we have the sum, as n goes from 0 to infinity, of negative 1 to the n over n plus t plus 1 to the, let's see, we're on the fourth power, but we're only on the third derivative, so that's going to be k plus 1. So the k plus 1 power. All right, so now these things are both equal to the kth derivative of our function of t. All right, so that means they're equal to each other. So I'm just going to go ahead and, excuse me, uh, erase these. And we'll just say that this is equal to this, because it is. All right, now we can start canceling some stuff. Let's see. Both of them have a negative 1 to the k, so we can cancel that. So now we're just left with this. All right, what happens if we take this equality and plug it? Don't forget, this is, this is true for all values of t. So it's true for t equals 0. So if we let t equals 0, this e to the negative tx, becomes a 1. Uh, and this t becomes a 0, leaving us nothing but n plus 1. All right. So... Let's do a familiar trick with this, and we'll subtract 1 from all the n's inside our sum and add 1 to the n on the index. So we'll add 1 to 0 gives us 1. Adding 1 to infinity gives us infinity. Uh, adding a 1 to, I'm sorry, subtracting a 1 from this n would just have the effect of multiplying the entire thing by negative 1. So we'll just put a negative sign there. And then we just subtract 1 from this n, giving us nothing but n to the k plus 1. And now, our final step is to just replace that t, or that k, with a t. And that is the identity that I was trying to show today, um, and I believe I was successful. So, uh, there you go. Hope you enjoyed that.